Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. I'm at a loss for words today. You know, I've made a pretty concerted effort here to not pay too much mind, not provide excessive oxygen to these ridiculous indictments, because obviously that's exactly what they want. But of course, without playing into it too much, we have to address every single indictment. And here we go, we're on our third. Jack Smith is the Oprah Winfrey of indictments. This one, though, it takes the cake. This is the worst one yet. This shows you just how far the deep state is willing to go to set new precedents to essentially throw the Constitution in the trash, they are willing to do anything to go after Donald Trump, including indicting a former sitting president for what exactly? For simply holding a political opinion. We gotta rip into this one, folks. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, I'm sure your Twitter feed has been filled with a bunch of controlled opposition clowns making the case that Donald Trump is guilty. Brian J. Karam writes, the Trump case is not a First Amendment case. Read the indictment. It specifically avoids that roadblock. Jack Smith is more adept at the law than all of you instant armchair lawyers. Don and his minions can scream all they want in public, and they will in order to ratchet up support and grift you out of your money, but that means nothing in a court of law where facts matter. We are a nation of laws, not a nation led by mob rule. When criticized in the comments by a random commenter, writing, Brian, I did note you don't have a JD, so please don't get snooty about anyone being an armchair lawyer. What you could do is offer a shred of reasoning as to why hiring lawyers and going into court to contest an election is suddenly a crime. Bet you can't. Brian J. Karam writes, read the indictment. So he doesn't actually clarify his stance. He just calls Trump a grifter and anybody who's defending Trump an armchair lawyer. Then when asked to clarify his stance, he says, read the indictment. Great argument. Joe Walsh, another clown on Twitter, writes, I woke up two hours ago. I'd read the entire indictment for the second time. He's a traitor. He's an effing traitor to this country. You cannot read that indictment and come to a different conclusion, not if you care about our democracy. Again, he doesn't actually make an argument. They're just stating things. Trump a criminal. Read the indictment. All right, well, I've been through the indictment multiple times, and I came to the conclusion that all of these ridiculous actors are full of you-know-what. The indictment itself, this entire case, first of all, is a First Amendment case, and secondly, is making a claim of conspiracy and defrauding the American public by using deceit and false claims. As described in the indictment, purpose of conspiracy, the purpose of the conspiracy was to overturn the legitimate results of the 2020 2020 election by using knowingly false claims of election issues to obstruct the federal government function by which those results are collected, counted, and certified. So the fraud portion is purely speculative. It's based on an assumption. The assumption is that Trump was lying and didn't actually believe the things that were being told to him. How exactly can you prove that? Let's not even go into the whole free speech element. Protected free speech, political opinions, which citizens and politicians have an absolute right to hold regardless of whether or not those opinions are perfectly accurate, let's just stick on what Jack Smith has to prove. Jack Smith has to prove that within Donald Trump's brain, he was knowingly attempting to defraud the public. Yeah, unless there's some text message or phone call where Donald Trump basically lays out this whole scheme, that is an impossible ask. It's impossible to prove that. That's the first hole in this Swiss cheese indictment. The second one, as Donald Trump's attorney clearly outlines, is the issue of free speech. The state legislatures have the ultimate ability to qualify electors. He followed that advice. Now, you may disagree as to whether or not those things actually occurred or not. That's why we have political debate. We don't have criminal trials over that. We have the discussion but like we're just having. But it matters if those things actually occurred or not, John. Not under the First but Amendment. It matters if those things no. actually occurred because... Not, not at all, because it, it, under the First Amendment... It doesn't matter if actually fraud. No. So, so it protects... If we're going to have a, a situation where the Department of Justice is going to fact-check politicians and indict politicians for political speech and whether or not they're factually accurate, then this country will shut down politically because it's a never-ending cycle of tit-for-tat. And that's the risk of injecting politics into the criminal justice system. So right now, people disagree with President Trump. What's going to happen four years from now if somebody disagrees with President Biden in terms of what he said during the election? That's why we don't criminalize political speech. Political speech under the First Amendment has, has an almost absolute protection. Nobody gets to judge whether it's 
true or not, except the American people. And but we John, do that in an election. We do that in an election. We do that in the case of a president by impeachment, but we don't indict people. John. Now, of course, CNN's Caitlin Collins tried her very best to engage once again in debate rather than fact-based journalism, which she is, I mean, absolutely awful at. We learned that during the town hall. Once again, she is completely out of her depths on this one. I am failing to see the crime. Holding a particular opinion is not illegal. Thinking something happened, whether it did or not, is not illegal. And even the process by which Donald Trump approached it, again, not illegal. Even CNN's Van Jones, ahead of the 2020 election, essentially laid out the entire thing in October, arguing that there is in fact a legal and constitutional manner by which results can be challenged. There's a possibility that the Republicans in the House of Representatives could just anoint their candidate to be president even without the popular vote or a majority electoral college. That could happen. Now, some people would call that outcome a perfectly legal, perfectly constitutional coup against the very idea of majority rule in the United States. Perfectly legal, perfectly constitutional, that is possible under our constitution. Obviously, I mean, it's not exactly a surprise to anyone. The Democrats tried doing it to Donald Trump back in 2016. They argued vehemently on the House floor to reject the results, thereby sending the results back to the state. And once again, of course, the double standard applies. Reading Jack Smith's indictment, one of the first things that comes to mind is, well, based on the way that this indictment is written, the only person who actually belongs in prison is Hillary Clinton. I mean, let's have a conversation about engaging in malicious lies to defraud the United States. Russiagate, anyone? Steel dossier, anyone? What was it, four illegal FISA warrants? A whole scheme, an attempted impeachment, a special counsel investigation, all based on a clear fraud. This is dangerous territory, folks. This is dangerous, dangerous territory. Special counsel Jack Smith has opened up a can of worms on this one. He has essentially unlocked new precedent that enables the government to indict politicians or even regular citizens based on their opinions and their analysis. If you have an opinion that doesn't conform to the official narrative, you're a criminal involved in a conspiracy to defraud the United United States. Again, the core component of Jack Smith's little case here is based on the following. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Fueled by lies. Even if that was the case, since when is lying in Washington a crime? I mean, for Pete's sakes, Adam Schiff should be serving a life sentence. Multiple life sentences at this point, if that's the case. Uncharted territory, folks. It's hard to say what this is going to lead to. This case is a complete joke. And boy, oh boy, do I hope it all backfires in the end. We'll have to see. And of course, you know, I'll keep you guys updated on all of it. That's pretty much what I got for you guys for now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.